In today's increasingly digital world, data has become the lifeblood of organizations. Yet, with cyber threats growing more sophisticated by the day, protecting and recovering these vital assets has never been more challenging. Let's discuss how enhancing data recovery through cyber resilience strategies can enable your business for success. Today, we'll explore how organizations can build robust data recovery capabilities that not only respond to incidents, but actively strengthen their overall cyber resilience posture. Let's explore two critical concepts in digital protection landscape, cybersecurity and cyber resilience. Let's start with cybersecurity. Think of this as your organization's digital armor. Cybersecurity primarily focuses on preventing attacks and unauthorized access. Through implementing proactive measures such as firewalls, antivirus solutions, and other security solutions, cybersecurity concentrates on detecting and blocking threats while maintaining confidentiality of sensitive data. For example, cybersecurity is like having strong locks on your doors and windows. It's about preventing break-ins. Cyber resilience takes a broader approach. It assumes that some attacks will inevitably succeed, thus focusing on maintaining business operations during disruptions, including recovery and continuity planning. Cyber resilience help organizations adapt to the changing threat landscapes by focusing on organizational survival and continued functionality. Think of cyber resilience as not just having locks, but also having insurance, backup plans, and alternative operating procedures. Some key contrasts, cybersecurity focuses primarily on protecting and prevention, where cyber resilience encompasses the entire cycle of prevent, detect, respond, and recover. Cybersecurity takes a defensive stance while cyber resilience adapts a holistic survival strategy. Additionally, cybersecurity concentrates on the pre-attack measures where cyber resilience covers before, during, and after an incident. Why do both matter? The reality of today's digital landscape is we need both. Cybersecurity provides the essential protective measures, while cyber resilience ensures that business survival when those measures face challenges. Think of it this way. Cybersecurity asks, how do we prevent attacks? While cyber resilience asks, how do we continue to operate regardless? of the attack. Now let's discuss several key elements of cybersecurity. First, let's discuss endpoint protection software. Antivirus and endpoint detection response, also known as EDR software, plays a critical role in protecting our devices from malware and viruses. It helps identify and remove threats before they, be, they can cause damage. Keeping security software up to date to ensure that you have the latest signatures and heuristics enabled. Run regular scans to detect and remove malware. Device updates. Regularly update your device to ensure that your systems and applications have the latest security patches, thus helping prevent exploitation by attackers. Enable automatic updates for operating systems, browsers, and other key applications. Prioritize critical updates over minor ones to minimize downtime. Test updates in a controlled environment before deploying them to your entire organization. Employee training. Well-informed employees are our first line of defense against cyber threats. They need to be aware of potential risk and know how to respond appropriately. Providing regular security awareness training for all employees is important. Focus on phishing, password management, data handling, best practices, as well as anything else that is applicable to your vector that you work in. Encourage employees to report suspicious activities and or concerns to the help desk or directly to the Security Operations Center. Lastly, incident response planning. Having a solid incident response plan or IRP in place helps us respond quickly and effectively to security incidents. This minimizes the impact of an attack and ensures business continuity. We need to develop incident response plans that outline roles, procedures, and communication protocols. Conduct regular tabletop exercise to test the plan's effectiveness. 
review and update the plan as needed to reflect changes in your organization. By focusing on these key elements of security, we can significantly improve our data resilience and protect ourselves from potential cyber threats. Data resilience refers to the ability of an organization to withstand and recover from various types of disruptions and threats, including cyber attacks, natural disasters, and other events that could compromise the integrity, availability, and confidentiality of its data. There are some several key terms we need to be aware of. Availability. The data is accessible when needed regardless of circumstances. Integrity. Your data remains accurate, complete, and unchanged throughout its life cycle. Confidentiality. You must be able to access the sensitive information and control who has access to it to restrict it to authorized personnel. Resilience, the ability to recover quickly from disruptions and or threats. Flexibility, the capacity to adapt to changing circumstances. Furthermore, organizations must implement robust security controls such as encryption, access control, and threat detection systems thus ensuring regular backup of data and having a solid disaster recovery plan is in place. Focus on your business continuity plan. Ensure you have developed a comprehensive plan that outlines procedures for responding to numerous different types of disruptions. Reduce risk of data breaches and cyber attacks. Improve your reputation and trust with customers and stakeholders. Cyber resilience enhances your ability to respond to and recover from disruptions while increasing flexibility and adaptability during these circumstances. By prioritizing data resilience, your organization can minimize the impact of disruptions and ensure business continuity while maintaining customer trust and confidence. Now it's time to assess and identify cyber risk. Does your organization perform comprehensive assessments? Are these performed monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually? Are you only performing these because you are trying to maintain compliance with SOC 2 or ISO? It's challenging now to make sure that these assessments are not just a checkbox. Identify potential risk in your environment. Work with your cyber threat intel or your security operations center to identify what risk you have in your environment? Do they have playbooks or runbooks to respond to these events? Work with your legal teams, your GRC teams, to make sure you have policies, procedures, and templates in place for how you would communicate potential risk with inside of your organization. And be prepared to respond. Make sure that you test your disaster recovery plans. Have a business continuity plan. Test them regularly. Build your DR plans. Get management buy-in. Make sure that you have secured leadership support. Make sure that they are aware what your disaster recovery plan states, what their role and responsibility is during a disaster. Document the teams. Align roles and responsibilities. All teams in your organization can play a part during a DR event, from legal, support, help desk, IT, security, outline their roles and responsibilities. Depending on the, the event, they may be performing their day job, but others may be able to sign up to manage a call center, to be boots on the ground in the community, and or be able to fulfill shift work to allow you to respond and recover in a timely manner. Thus, ensure you have risk assessments so that you know what to do in the event of a hurricane or a tornado, the loss of power or cyber event. You've been ransomware. You've had a worm go through your environment that's shutting down your computers. All of these should be part of your risk assessment. Make sure that you have a risk register that identifies these things and outlines what it would mean to your organization if that risk happened in your environment. Thus, have recovery strategies. Make sure that you have the ability to recover. If it's your data, do a validated restore because without a validated restore, all you have is a hope that your data is truly backed up. If it's a physical disaster, do you have a plan in place to access your data? 
to get into your office or to be able to serve your community and your customers and or your clients. Build a DR plan, have buy-in, document your teams, perform the risk assessments, and make sure you have recovery strategies in place. Employee training is imperative to have cyber resiliency. First, your employees need to be able to identify threats. Can they recognize a phishing email, a social engineering attack? Do they know what to do if they are to fall victim to one of these attacks? Does your help desk have proper training on what questions to ask, what data to collect, and do they have an escalation path to make sure that the security team is pulled in promptly to swiftly contain any threats within inside of your environment? Thirdly, data recovery. We've talked about it already. Do you run tabletop exercises? Have you implemented a DRBCP exercise quarterly, semi-annually into your environment so that you know you can safely restore critical data in a timely manner? Train your employees to identify threats. Make sure you're comfortable with the response times that come with the training exercises that you provided to your employees, your help desk, your SOC teams, your IT teams, and your leadership understands the data recovery, SLAs, service level agreements that they've agreed to, and what it will cost your organization if you miss them. Perform resource to make sure that your data is viable in the event you need to recover it. Leadership involvement, it's important. Your board should be aware of your cyber resilience program, efforts, investments. They need to be at the table when you are performing DRBCP plans, when you're implementing your incident response plan, when you're implementing a physical security assessment or exercise. They may not physically attend the briefings, the exercises, but they need to be aware that they are going on and what their role is. Additionally, they need to make sure that your organization is properly staffed to have the resources allocated to perform this. Do you have an incident management platform or process? Do you have approval to implement security or IT isolations to protect your organization? Do you have contacts with local law enforcement and federal agencies? Have you tested engaging an incident response process in case you need external help? You need to dedicate time each year to your employees to support these efforts. And this starts with getting leadership involvement from the top down. Make sure you have a 3 2, one backup plan, having three copies of your data on two different media types with one being off-site. So, Felias, why is this important? Having three copies makes sure that if one fails, you still have another. That's why it's important to have, to have them on two different media types. One can be in the cloud, one can be on your data center, and then your third one that's off-site could be on a tape drive, a DVD, or an array that's kept off the internet in an air gap network. That way, if you get hit with a ransomware attack, they cannot encrypt all three copies because one of them is offline. If they're in the cloud and your cloud has an outage, you still have access to the data in your data center or in your removable hard drives. That can be what maintains your availability for your customers. So ensure that you have a 3 2, one plan in place, three copies of your data on two different media types with one of them be off-site. So we've talked about already a couple times, make sure you understand your backup strategy. Frequently back up your data. Make sure that you have a copy that's not connected to the internet, that's offline, that you can get to in case of a cloud outage, a ransomware attack, or any other availability where you cannot get to your technology 
because it's connected to the internet. Quick recovery is again what I alluded to earlier. Have a validated recovery, not just a validated backup. You do not want to be in the middle of an event and have to tell your executives that the job has been running every night, but no data has been copied. Or the data that you copied over was corrupt because you never tried to do a validated restore. But I'd like to leave you now with some food for thought. Make a plan now to test your backups. Make sure you're doing them frequently and that you implement the 321 we talked about on the previous slide so that you're not impacted if AWS or Azure goes down or your organization is hit with a ransomware attack or you have your key systems, RAID system go down and you lose all of the drives and your data is wiped. Be secure, stay safe, and make sure that you are being cyber resilient. So now that we have gotten through the difference between cybersecurity and cyber resilience, be resilient. Have resiliency inside of your organization. Take time now to make sure that you have a plan, that you've executed that plan. You've tested that plan, and you're aware of how you will go about responding to cyber attacks, natural disasters, and any other disruption to your business so that you can maintain resiliency in your organization. Thank you.